On this Canada Day episode of Canadian Football League Weekly, Adam and I discussed the Week 4 games played over Canada Day weekend, where one team suffered their first loss of the season, and the other three games all ended in walk-off field goals. Welcome to Canadian Football League Weekly, presented by the World of Football. Each week, we recap the games played north of the border, and we look ahead at next week's games. I'm Randy Snow, and I'm joined by my son, Adam. That's right. Happy Canada Day, everybody. (laughs) What a perfect time to do this show. We do it every Monday, and it just so happens Canada Day falls on today. So kudos to our friends up there in Canada. We all hope you're celebrating and having a good time up there. We love you guys. Uh, and you know, hopefully nobody loses their fingers during a fireworks show like some <laughs> Americans do. Uh, yeah, really. I also want to thank you guys out there. We are now currently sitting at 986 YouTube subscribers, uh, 14 away from hitting our goal of 1,000 subscribers. So we appreciate all of you out there for taking the time and hitting that like and subscribe button. It means a lot to us. And uh, you know, liking all the other shows we got going on, like This Week in the World of Football, our podcast we do every week. We just celebrated 350 episodes last week with a special video podcast. Go over and check that out. We'll have number 351 up tomorrow or Tuesday, July 2nd. We also got Just Lying Around, which we'll be recording a new episode tonight. So be on the lookout for an episode of that if you're into talking or listening about the Detroit Lions. And Arena Football League Weekly. We had a lot of breaking news in the Arena Football League last week. So that show from last week is up. We'll have another one coming up this week before the playoffs start over there. So it's been a very busy week here at the World of Football. We've been doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, sorry, I've been doing a lot of stuff oh, for the really? channel. So hey, you didn't say anything about my sweet T-shirt here. I'm about to get there, man. Oh man, when you want to be <laughs> loud, Randy, you you love to be loud. And don't get me wrong, I love the Stan Peters logo and their colors. Uh, I'm just gonna say I don't know if red's your color. But I mean, be. it's not a bad looking shirt. <laughs> it's just it, yeah. I never see you wear red a whole lot, so it's, it throws me off a little bit. Yeah, I don't wear red very often, but I'm in the process of trying to get a T-shirt for every team in the CFL. Um, I've got a Toronto one coming. I didn't. I don't know why I didn't grab a Toronto T-shirt when we were at the game a week ago, but I didn't. Because you were too busy getting a... the scarf. <laughs> I, I was too busy getting a scarf from every team too. <laughs> yeah, I got the scarf. I got some I... nifty looking ones. I, I was thinking about poutine also, so I I don't know. I just never got the the shirt, but uh, I've got one yeah. coming in the mail. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get one for every team uh, in the CFL this season. And I like it where it's got the the name and the logo. So um, that's that's my mission in the next couple of weeks. All, All right, right well, let's, don't uh, jinx any teams when you wear that shirt because uh, you picked the Stampeders this week, and they may or may not have come out with a victory. We'll talk about it in a second. <laughs> yeah, we shall see. All right, let's start with the games this week. Uh, beginning on yeah. Thursday night, it was the British Columbia Lions over the Edmonton Elks 24-21. to BC was up in this game 13-12 to at halftime. Uh, BC took a 21-18 to lead with 2 minutes and 27 seconds remaining in the game. But Edmonton tied the score at 21 apiece with a minute and 11 seconds to go. Kicker Sean White kicked a 42-yard field goal for BC as time expired for the win. That makes three consecutive three-point losses for Edmonton this year. Wow, they are so close to, to having a really good record. Uh, quarterback, uh, BC quarterback Vernon Adams Jr. completed 27 of 38 passes for 331 yards and a touchdown. He also ran for another 33 yards. Wide receiver Aiden Eberhardt led the receiving core with six catches for 78 yards. And for Edmonton, it was quarterback McLeod Bethel-Thompson who completed 19 of 30 passes for 247 yards, one touchdown, but two interceptions. That was the big difference in the game. He also ran for another 29 yards. Wide receiver Dylan Mitchell had four catches for 81 yards, while wide receiver Arkell Smith had five catches for 70 yards. On defense, linebacker Niles Morgan had 12 tackles. What would you think about this game? Uh, those poor Elks. I mean, man, they're, they've been so close. Three three straight games, losing yep. on you know by three points. I yep. mean, last week it was the walk off field goal. You know, uh, just to do it again. Boy, oh boy! Yep. If you're an Elks fan, I mean, it's it's a little discouraging, you know, to to have that many games come down to that. But 
Yep. The, the elsewhere team I keep I keep praising right now. I'm like they're just this close. Yep. I don't know what it is, but they're they're just this close to getting over the hump. They they're just waiting for the ball to drop the other way. Yeah. But they I mean they get, just can't close out a game. Yeah, yeah, they got to get over that. I mean, we've seen that happen with our beloved Detroit Lions. You know, <laughs> uh, in the Dan Campbell era, his first season, it seemed like we were in a game really close, but then something would happen and we'd shoot ourselves in the foot. Or we just couldn't get over that hump, and it took time. That's something you got to learn to do as a team, and and hopefully the Elks can get you know get that right. But let's also not you know dissuade anything from what the British Columbia Lions are doing. They got some guys yep. on that team. Vernon Adams yep. is one of my favorite quarterbacks in the CFL right now. He's got a couple of weapons. They're just, I don't know, I, I like that BC team. They're spunky. They got a little bit of grit. Um, I I don't know. I, I just feel like, you know, they, they just got a little bit more, uh, not experience, but they, they do seem to have a little bit more put together than the Elks. Well, I think BC is motivated to get to the Grey Cup game this year because it's going to be in their home stadium. So I think that's part of the motivation for them to do well this year. I mean, they want to do well every year, but this year it's even more important because they would be playing at home in the Grey Cup game. Yeah, that would be something, wouldn't it? Yeah. All right, we're going to move on to our Friday night game, which saw the Montreal Alouettes continue their winning streak, their winning ways over the Toronto Argonauts, 30-20. to 20. Uh, Quarterback Ricky Ray was added to the Toronto Argonauts Wall of Honor at halftime of this game uh, he, and becomes the 27th all-time Argo. He won two championships with Toronto in 2012 and 2017. So kudos to Ricky Ray real quick yep. for getting put in the, the Hall of Fame there or the Wall of Fame yep. in Toronto. So that's pretty sweet for them. All right, so Montreal was up 13-6 to at halftime of this one. This was a very close game for most of it. And they were up 23-12 to after three quarters. Toronto, Toronto ended up scoring a touchdown with a minute remaining in the game, but it wasn't enough to get over the, the Montreal lead. And uh, now Montreal remains perfect on the season at 4-0. Montreal quarterback Cody Fajardo completed 33 of uh, 41 passes, 284 yards and a touchdown. Wide receiver Cole Speaker had eight catches for 113 yards and a touchdown. While wide receiver Tyson Philpot, who just might be the best wide receiver in the league in my opinion, had mm-hmm. five catches for 90 yards and a touchdown. Uh, for Toronto quarterback Cameron Dukes completed 22 of 32 passes for 199 yards, no touchdowns. He did end up throwing an interception, I believe, during this game, which might have been his think- first one of the season. Uh, wide receiver uh, Makai Polk had five catches for 60 yards and a touchdown, which was thrown by backup quarterback Brian Scott. Kicker Lyram Hiralahu, uh had four field goals made during the game, and it's the 12th straight win overall for Montreal, by the way, dating back to last season, uh, their first loss of the season uh, for Toronto. So I, I watched this game as it was going on, uh, and boy, Montreal looks like the team to beat. We've said that now for a couple weeks, that they are probably the best team in the league. I'd say they are the best team. The Argos gave them a little bit of a fight, and it's not like Montreal pulled away too far. They made a couple of mistakes, Montreal did. So Montreal still got some improving to do, despite being the best team. So, I don't know. I think we could be in for a heck of a finish there in the East if Toronto and Montreal keep doing what they're doing. I mean, we'll see what Montreal's quarterbacks or Montreal's. Toronto's quarterback situation ends up being like once uh, Chad Kelly comes back uh, oh. from his suspension. Uh, nothing against uh, Dukes, who's playing pretty well right now. He's, he's he'll put up some decent numbers and a, a good quarterback rating. But uh, I don't know. How do you feel about this game? Um, Cameron Dukes has looked pretty good in the first two games. Uh, I don't know what it was, but he just didn't have it uh, this week you know, against Montreal. Uh, but, yeah, he has been surprisingly good uh, in relief. Uh, of Chad Kelly, but man, yeah, I don't know what it was. He he just didn't have it this week. Could it be that Montreal defense? I mean, that Montreal defense is legit. They got yeah. some guys. They they fly to the ball. I, I can't tell you how many times I'd watch Toronto either throw like a swing pass or a short pass, and there was a Montreal guy right there to just make the tackle. And it was rare for a guy to miss a tackle for Montreal. So yeah. I, I just think Montreal's one of the more complete teams in the league. I, I think Fajardo, as much as I think he's been a uh, a great addition to that Montreal team since he jumped ship from, he used to be with the Riders, right? The Rough Riders. So jumping over to Montreal, I've, 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 I want to say that's what who it was. But regardless, since he joined Montreal, I mean, he's been a good addition. Uh, still a little flawed, 
You know, there was a couple passes he threw that I was just like, boy, why would you make that pass? And Toronto, you know, <laughs> picked it off. But hey, well, look, if if you keep winning, you keep winning. They're four and zero. Uh, Montreal's the team with the target on their back. The undefeated defending Great Cup champs uh, defeated the 2022 Great Cup champs. So, <laughs> and it was the only game that was, uh, you know, it was 10 points was the difference in this game. So it was the biggest deficit right. of the weekend, which right, if yeah. you're the CFL, you, you got to be happy about that. Like all your games were within 10 points. And shoot, yeah. we're about to talk about two more games that come down to field goals. I mean, yep. this is a heck of a weekend for the CFL. Yeah, it was a great weekend. All the all the games were really great. Uh, let's move on to the Saturday game where the Calgary Stampeders defeated the Winnipeg Blue Bombers by the score of twenty two to nineteen in overtime. Calgary was up nine to seven at halftime. Uh, Winnipeg sky tied, tied the score nineteen nineteen with thirty seven seconds left in the game, sending it into overtime. On Winnipeg's overtime possession, quarterback Chris Strebler was intercepted in the end zone, uh, ending their drive. Calgary then marched down the field on their possession, and Rene Paredes kicked a 52-yard field goal for the win as time expired. Calgary quarterback Jake Mayer completed 28 of 42 passes for 239 yards and a touchdown. Wide receiver Markin Michel had nine catches for 74 yards and a touchdown. Uh, kicker Rene Paredes made four field goals, including the game winner in overtime. For Winnipeg, uh, quarterback Zach Kalaros completed eight of 12 passes for 55 yards, but no touchdowns before leaving the game with an injury in the second quarter. Uh, he, he did not return in the game. I, or you, you said he did return to the game. I don't remember him coming back. But He, he came uh, back in for a couple of plays, and then I, he okay. was out after that. But he was still standing okay. on the sideline in his gear, so I don't know if it was right. a precautionary thing. We still haven't heard or gotten an update regarding his health yet. So, Yeah. But uh, in his place, backup quarterback Chris Strebler completed 14 of 24 passes for 170 yards and a touchdown. Uh, wide receiver Nick Dembski had nine catches for 54 yards. And wide receiver Drew Wolitarski Wallet had four catches for 43 yards and a touchdown. Kicker Sergio Castillo made four field goals. His longest of the game was from 60 yards. What a kick that was. Yeah. I yep. saw that and I was like, good Lord, this guy. That's yep. why he's one of the best kickers in the game. Uh, mm -hmm. Man, this is a heck of a kick. I was yeah. beside myself when that happened. Yeah, I was I was rooting for, for Calgary in this game. Uh, I've always liked Calgary. Um, uh, you know, Winnipeg, boy. It, my question is, is it time to start worrying? I, I've been seeing the last couple of weeks, oh, they'll be fine. Don't worry about it. it it's just a slow start. Uh, after an 0-4 start, I'm thinking maybe it is time to start worrying if you are a Blue Bombers fan. What do you think? I said I said last week that this was the game, that if they lose to the Stampeders, I would start to be worried. It didn't help seeing Caleros go down. As soon as that happened, I went, yeah. ooh, boy, that's not good. And then Strevler, when he came in to, you know, to fill in, uh, he he struggled for a bit. He, I mean, he came on strong there at the end, though, you know, get it back to overtime. And uh, unfortunately, through that pick at the end of the game. But I, I he's a capable backup when he's on. Uh, mm -hmm. But, man, if he struggles like that, I I couldn't give the Blue Bombers a chance. And we'll see. Yeah. Like I said, we don't know the, the status of Caleros yet. If he comes back and he's healthy, I'd still give this team a chance. But right now, you're 0-4. You've lost to four pretty decent teams. Uh, I, I'd be a little worried if I was Winnipeg going forward, and I'm on. I wouldn't say keep an eye on next season, but it also doesn't help that your your star quarterback, who's been so awesome and probably a top one or two quarterback in the league for the last several years, has yeah. not thrown a touchdown pass through four right. games. Right, right. Still, yeah, yeah. not this season. Yep, it's been a so, struggle yeah. for Caleros. Yeah. And that Winnipeg defense that usually, you know, a top one or two, I, this defense has got a lot of flaws. Uh, yeah. I know they've lost some guys to other teams, but yeah, Winnipeg, this is just, this just isn't the same Winnipeg team. This, this to me almost feels like a few years ago. Remember when the, the Alouettes were so dominant and it was just like, it seemed like all the time we were talking about uh, the, the Alouettes going to the gray cup, the one of the best teams behind. Oh crap. Who's yeah. their offensive coordinator now? A Anthony uh, Calvillo. When Calvillo was the quarterback, it just seemed like they couldn't be stopped. <laughs> yeah, this is what it feels like. It feels like 
it feels like when that happened, when the Alouettes like dropped off and they've been bad, that's what it feels like. It's just that sudden drop off for the the Blue Bombers, and now we're like, I won't say they're bad. They just aren't that good to overcome the hump. Like those close games, they just can't get out of. Yeah. Yep, I agree. All right, and the final game of the weekend, Sunday night, saw the Ottawa Red Blacks defeat the Hamilton Tiger Cats for the first time since 2018, <laughs> uh, 24 to 22. Ottawa led this game 12 to 10 at halftime. It was very close until wide receiver Justin Hardy caught a 15 yard touchdown pass to give the Red Blacks a 21 16 lead late in the game. Hamilton, however, marched back down the field and scored a touchdown of their own when wide receiver Shamar Bridges caught a four yard touchdown pass with 28 seconds remaining to take the lead to to me or no that tied it up didn't it uh no i think they had a one point lead at that point that's right so they took the one point lead and it was just like dang 28 seconds left hamilton seems like they got this in the bag but not so fast my friends in the (laughs) words of lee corso uh because ottawa then worked their way down the field and kicker lewis ward kicked the game winning 45 yard field goal as time expired Hired. Ottawa yeah. beats Hamilton, like I said up top, for the first time since 2018. They said it on the broadcast a couple of times, like 2,000 something days. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yep. Uh, yeah, that was I a had big, no idea that. That was a big monkey to get off their back. Yeah, I had no idea it was that bad. Like, that had been that long since they had beaten the Tie Cats. Uh, yeah. no offense, the Tie Cats haven't been great for some of those years. So it surprised me a little bit because I thought the Red Blacks have had, always had a pretty solid team the last several years. Um, but so Ottawa quarterback Drew Brown completed 24 of 39 passes for 265 yards and a touchdown, while wide receiver Jalen Acklin had seven catches for 90 yards. Wide receiver Justin Hardy had five catches for 75 yards and a touchdown. On the defensive side, though, for the Red Blacks, linebacker Frankie Griffin had 11 tackles. Uh, yep. Kicker Lewis Ward made four field goals, including that game winner we were just talking about. On Hamilton's side of the ball, quarterback Bo Levi Mitchell completed 30 of 45 passes for 322 yards and two touchdowns. Wide receiver Tim White had eight catches for 118 yards and a touchdown. It did seem like in this game, the Tie Cats were trying to get Tim White involved quite a bit in this game. It just seemed like they kept trying to find ways to get him the ball. He made some pretty good catches and, you know, he's a heck of a weapon, but just wasn't enough to overcome those uh, scrappy red blacks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Hamilton looked good. I mean, they they played well and just you know left they left twenty eight seconds on the clock and that was enough for uh, BC to to kick a field goal. So uh, yeah, another great game that came down to the wire. What are these teams going to learn? Like, hey, look, teams have been winning on the last second field goals. Maybe you got to drain a little more clock. You got to get it down to those zeros <laughs> and do it yourself because yeah. they, in the CFL, it's been so exciting. Like, we talk about the Arena Football League finishes lately have been pretty great. Uh, you know, the NFL, you know, it's rare that we get this many close finishes at the end. I get it. The NFL's got a lot more games, a lot more teams. But for the CFL, a nine-team league to have three of their four games over the weekend be this close, this is the kind of stuff you want and can build your league around, you know, especially for fans who aren't really familiar with the game. That's why we like doing this show. For If you don't know about the CFL, it's been fun. It's been entertaining. The last several weeks, there's yeah. always been a last-second field goal or a last minute touchdown to, to win the game. They've, they've been exciting finishes and the CFL is one of the most fun leagues to watch. I, I saw a comment on one of the, the highlight videos that said, uh, I'm an American. I barely get to see games, but just from what I've seen lately, it seems like the CFL, if I were a player is the league I'd want to play in. Cause it just seems like they're having way more fun up there. And yeah. to be honest with you, I think so. Now, something we didn't touch on, and we're going to talk about the, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders had a bye this week. One game, if I could, go back to real quick, that Toronto uh, and Montreal game. I had a question for you. How do you feel about that uh, that dribble drop kick thing that they've been <laughs> doing up there? I forget what exactly it was called at the top of my head. Uh, uh, the, the onside dribble kick punt. is <laughs> That's what it's called. <laughs> yeah. Can we talk um, about that for a second? Yeah, uh, it's it's interesting. It's unique, uh, uniquely Canadian. Uh, I, he- I heard them talking about it uh, on the broadcast, and I, I think they said that the rules committee was looking seriously about doing away with that particular rule uh, this season, but in the end, they left it in. So, I mean, if it's a legal play and you can get away with it, go for it. 
and Montreal is taking advantage of the rule. They're they're playing by the rules, and uh, uh, I I thought it was fun to see. Uh, so uh, use it. It's there in the yeah. in the rule book. Go ahead and use it. Yeah, and if the other team can't stop you, that's their problem. That's right. You know, I, I think as the league, you know, hey, Montreal's done it. Montreal's right. done this before. We got to watch out for it. Right. So, hey, that that's it's just like the tush push in the NFL. It's like stop them. Yeah. It's in the rule book. You can stop them. That's always yeah. an option. <laughs> so, because I mean, there's been a lot of people this week saying, you know, all oh, they need to get rid of it. It's it's a bogus play, whatever. I'm all in favor of it. Is it weird? Yes. Is it, uh, you know, kind of off-putting in a way? Yes. But boy, oh boy, does it really change the the dynamic of a game? Because for uh, Montreal at that point, I mean, while they were up sixteen to six at that point, it was a second and twenty, and they flipped the second and twenty into a first and ten, just because because the the rule is you have to right. have the ball behind the line of scrimmage, kick it or punt it. And then have to recover it because it's a live right. ball. So right. as long as that guy dribbles it in front of him a yard, falls on it, new set of downs. Yep. I'm. Hey, if it works, it works. Yeah. I'm, I'll be shocked if we don't see it a little more now that this has happened this early in the season. Well, you know, uh, last year they were talking about uh, doing away with the rouge, and I was like, no. You've got to keep the rouge in the Canadian game. That is a part of the game. You know, some people don't like it or whatever, but I, I think it's, uh, it's great. I think it's a great way to, you know, throw thing, you know, throw an extra point in here and there where you know you're not going to get a tie. Somebody's going to win by a point because of a rouge. I, I think it's great. So leave the rouge alone. Leave this. What do you call it? The onside dribble kick punt alone. Uh, it's great. It's a lot of fun to watch. CFL football is fun. That's what we're there yes. for. Yes, I love. I've, I've been loving it. CFL's been great. They get rid of the rouge. I say we riot. Oh man! I mean, that's the last thing that Canadians want to hear on Canada Day. But <laughs> if they get rid of the rouge, Canada, I will come up across the border and riot with you. <laughs> they probably don't use uh, pitchforks and torches. What do you think they use? Uh, probably uh, maple syrup you... canisters and. Uh, <laughs> You're, you're just getting it. You're just getting yourself in trouble. You better shut up yeah. and let me go on and talk about the standings <laughs> after four weeks in the CFL. All right, all in right, the, fine. In the East Division, your Montreal Alouettes are perfect at a four and zero record. Toronto Argonauts at two and one. Ottawa Red Blacks at two and one, and the Hamilton Tiger Cats are at zero and four. Then in the West Division, you've got the BC Lions at three and one, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders at three and zero. The Calgary Stampeders at two and one, and the Edmonton Elks at zero and four, and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at zero and four. Winnipeg is zero and four for the first time since twenty twelve, so they they're having a rough season. All right, my gripe with you about that though is why are you putting the undefeated Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the second spot of the West Division? They should be number one. They have a perfect winning percentage. You know, I took that from the CFL website. I had it the yes. other way around. But I mirrored what the CFL website had, so I'm just going by what they had. I'm I'm I jumping over to the CFL. We- I'm going to jump over to the CFL website right now if my uh, uh, web browser would work, just to see. But uh, I'll take your are word you call- for it. And I'll, I'll- are you calling me a liar? Uh, well, yes, I will. I will call you a liar. I'll I'll see if I can't find uh, that and put it on during the. Uh, uh, the the show here because that uh, my my browser's acting a little funky right now. I won't open up CFL.ca. It's like they know I'm trying to prove them wrong, and it won't let me in there. <laughs> well, while you're trying in vain to prove me wrong, let's uh, go over the Week Five matchups. Uh, Thursday night this week, it's going to be the two and one Argonauts taking on the three and zero Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Uh, the on Friday night, it's going to be the Ottawa Red Blacks at two and one. At the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, 0-4. On Saturday, the Calgary Stampeders at 2-1 are going to be traveling to Montreal to take on the 4-0 uh, Alouettes. And the BC Lions at 3-1 are going to be traveling to the 0-4 Hamilton Tiger Cats on Sunday. Those last two games, the Saturday and Sunday games, those are going to be on CBS Sportsnet. So uh, you won't need to grab your laptop for those two games. You'll be able to watch them on TV in the U.S. Heck yeah. I mean, 
don't get me wrong. I, I've had a couple issues with CFL Plus just being a little laggy. I don't know if it's the internet I've been using. Uh, just the, a lot of the mouth syncing up bugs me a little bit when they like cut to the announcers, but which rarely happens. So mainly just to watch the game, CFL Plus has actually been a, a right. great yeah, uh, experience for the most yeah, part. I've, I'm I'm fine with the CFL Plus. Uh, a couple yeah, of times it told me it was CBS uh, Sportsnet. Yeah, and CBS Sportsnet's been doing a great job, yo. Know, I mean, yeah. all they're doing is taking the TSN broadcast and sure. giving it to us. But I sure. think CBS Sportsnet, I appreciate you. I love getting yeah. that little alert from my YouTube TV on my phone saying, "Hey, this Canadian Football League game's uh, live right now." I'm like, "Well, I know what I'm doing." <laughs> and then on by this coming week, the Edmonton Elks at 0 4. Luckily, they have a they have a bye, and hopefully, they can uh, regroup and uh, come back uh, next week uh, playing yeah. a little bit better. Which of these games are you looking forward to? Um, let's see. I think, um, well, I'm always uh, up for Toronto uh, playing a game. That's kind of my team. Um, Calgary at Montreal, that, that should be another good one. Um, other than that, you know, the, the other two games uh, feature 0-4 teams. So, I don't know. But, yeah, I, I'm saying either the Toronto game or the Calgary game. Those are the ones that I'm going to be paying close attention to this week. Toronto will be interesting. I'd love to see Saskatchewan now that their quarterback uh, situation is drastically oh, yeah. different. I mean, they started off 3-0, and and now they got to deal with the quarterback change as we talk about uh, our lone news story for the week. Saskatchewan quarterback, we talked about him uh, getting hurt there in that game last week because yeah. they've been on bye. Right. Um, so uh, Saskatchewan quarterback Trevor Harris has been placed on the six-game injured reserve list uh, after suffering an MCL strain last week against Hamilton. The 38-year-old quarterback missed most of the 2023 season after suffering a knee injury in Week 2. Quarterback Shea Patterson will take over as the starter. So the, yeah. the Rough Riders are off to a great start. And nothing against Shea Patterson. We'll have to see what he does as the uh, full-time starter for the next few weeks. Uh, but they're going to play a very tough Toronto team that, after losing to uh, Montreal, I think is going to be very hungry to – get back in the win column. But I'll be I'll be curious about this Rough Riders team going into next week. Yeah. Yeah, well, we shall see. Uh, looking forward to all the games this week. I'm going to try and catch all of them if I can. Uh, it's just been so much fun this year uh, watching the games. Very few blowouts, uh, even though you got some teams that haven't won a game yet. They've been in every game they've been playing pretty much. So uh, it's been yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, right now, so this week we got, you mentioned we have the 2 and 4 teams playing. Who gets their first win? Uh, right, as of right now, would it be Winnipeg or Hamilton? Do you think either of those get a win this week? Oh uh, boy. Um, let me see here. Um, boy, um, I maybe Hamilton. I, I'm just not sold on Win Winnipeg right now. I, I'm going to say Hamilton gets a win before Winnipeg does. That's just my I thought. Think this could, I think, this could be the week, depending on how Strebler plays, uh, and depending on if Kolaros even plays. Uh, but this could be a winnable game against Ottawa at home for the Blue Blue Bombers. I mean, to start off 0-5 uh, would be tough. It's not unheard of to, you know, bounce back and make it to the playoffs or get close. Remember a few years ago, I think it was Hamilton started off like 0-8, 0-9, and, and they turned their season around after that. I think they were just short of the playoffs, but they, they got good after that, you know, first half of the season. So we'll see. I'm I'm thinking this is the week maybe Winnipeg bounces things, you know, turns things around. And uh, this isn't really a news story, but I just wanted to say that uh, we do have our plane tickets to the Grey Cup. We've got our tickets to the game, and we've got a hotel reservation. So we are all set to go to the yep. Grey Cup this year. Man, I'm really looking forward to it. So we'll now, see you guys in British Columbia. Well, I'll be there because I've got my passport. How about you, son? Have you gotten that uh, passport yet? Uh, No, I can answer that question. No, yeah, working on working it. Working on it. I'm working. I've got time. We're working on it. All right, man, it's busy over man, here. Okay, don't wait. Don't wait too long. Get get that taken care of and get it out of the way. It'll get taken care of. No sweat, man. We good. Well, we'll if there. you don't, if you don't get it in time, your mom's got a passport, so I'll take her with, it, mm, with me. Don't threaten me with that. Mm -mm. There you go. There's your there's your incentive. Mm -mm. <laughs> I've had incentive. It's just like I said. It's been busy. Been busy, yeah. all right. Settle down. No, not not all of us are retired like you can and can just mosey on down to a post office at will. Shoot, some of us got lives, Randy. <laughs> I've lived my not life. all of us now can I'm... afford every CFL team in a t-shirt, Randy. Jeez. Hey. 
You got to be good with your money. That's all I can say. <laughs> all I can say is maybe if we get those last few subscribers, maybe we'll start making a little money here. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll be making tens of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when that hey, happens. <laughs> those tens of dollars adds up. You know how many t-shirts that is? You can probably get two for each team. Yeah, yeah, maybe. All right. That's all the time we've got for this week. Remember, folks, some people may love football, football more than we do, but nobody, and I mean nobody, loves more football than the two of us guys here in Kalamazoo. Until next time, I'm Randy Snow. And happy Canada Day, Canada. Seriously, we salute you guys. Have fun. Be safe. Um, now they need to add a game on Canada Day. Come on. Can we get a Canada Day game? To celebrate Canada Day. They do it for Labor Day. Let's get a Canada Day game going forward. Come on, Amb uh, what's the uh, commissioner's name? Ryan Randy Ambrosi. Ambrosi. Am Randy Ambrosi. Yeah, work on that, sir. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's a reason why they didn't put a game on Monday. but uh, Yeah, maybe there is. Whatever. Okay. But anyway, we will see you all next week on the 55-yard line. <laughs>